as you have seen solving uh, nodal analysis equations involves matrix inversion it is not just nodal analysis solving any system of uh, linear equations involves matrix inversion so in this lesson we will uh, look at uh, matrix inversion methods very briefly okay it's assume that you know all of these things from uh, high school algebra okay otherwise you can always refer to a standard textbook for this okay i will go through it once just so that for the small circuits such as a two node or a three node circuit you can invert matrices quickly and find the complete solution okay Now, in general if you have a square matrix a the inverse of that is 1 over the determinant of a times a matrix of cofactors okay i won't go into the definition of all of these things i will just show the results for a 2 by 2 and 3 by 3 matrix okay now this symbol of course means the determinant of a okay now let's take a 2 by 2 matrix a equals a11 a12 a21 a22 Okay, and the inverse of A is one over determinant of A, which I think you already know how to calculate. It's the product of the diagonal terms A11 times A22 minus the product of the off-diagonal terms A21, A12. Times the matrix of cofactors which is very easy for a, a 2 by 2 uh, matrix okay so all you have to do is swap the diagonal elements that is a22 comes over here and a11 goes over there okay so you simply interchange the positions of these two and for the other two you retain the positions but negate the values okay so here and here you have minus and minus that's all okay so now you can go back to uh, the example we had earlier okay which was we had a g matrix which was 3 by 2 minus 1 minus 1 5 by 4 milli Siemens. So, the inverse of this is 1 by the product of these two which is 3 by 2 times 5 by 4 and each of them is milli Siemens. So, the unit of this is milli Siemens square minus the product of these two which is just 1. Okay, milli Siemens square and I have to swap the diagonal elements. So, I get 5 by 4 milli Siemens over there, 3 by 2 milli Siemens over there and this minus 1 will become 1 milli Siemens and the other minus 1 also becomes 1 milli Siemens. Okay. And this whole thing will be equal to if I simplify this I get 7 by 8 milli Siemens square. So, I have 8 by 7 and 8 by 7 milli Siemens square times all of these entries which will give me 10 by 7 kilo ohms. I get this kilo ohms because I have milli Siemens divided by milli Siemens square. Okay. Eight by seven kilo, eight by seven kilo, 
and twelve by seven kilometers. Okay, and this is what I used. I multiplied the current source vector with this to get the node voltages. Okay. So, for a 3 by 3 matrix, you can similarly calculate the inverse by calculating the determinant of the matrix and various sub matrices. You can look at any standard textbook for this. The only one other thing I will mention is what is known as Kramer's rule. Let me take my nodal analysis equation g times v is i and I will assume that v so, I will assume a 3 by 3 matrix, which corresponds to a 4 node circuit, which is described by 3 KCL equations. And in general, there will be three non zero elements I 1, I 2, and I 3, okay, which consist of uh, total currents pushed into each of the nodes. They may not correspond to the values of uh, single current sources, but they correspond to the total currents being pushed into nodes 1, 2, and 3. Okay. Now, this Kramer's rule is convenient when you are not looking to solve for the uh, vector completely. So, let us say you want only one of them, right? let us say V 1. What you do is, V 1 turns out to be the ratio of two determinants and in the denominator, we have the G matrix itself, G 1 1, G 1 2, G 1 3, G 2 1, G 2 2, G 2 3 and G 3 1, G 3 2, G 3 3. And in the numerator, that matrix is basically this G matrix, but with one of the columns replaced by the right hand side. Okay. In this case, we want V1. So, the first column is replaced by the right hand side vector and the remaining two are the same as before. Okay. Similarly, if you wanted V2, We would have G here, and in this, the second column would be I, I one, I two, I three. Okay. So similarly for V three, you would uh, take this uh, right hand side vector, put it in the third column, take the ratio of that determinant to the determinant of the G matrix. Okay. So this is also sometimes useful. Again, this hand analysis three by three is the most complicated that uh, we would consider. Okay, For all other cases, if you have to solve for uh, larger circuits with uh, dimensions more than 3 by 3, you use a computer. Okay.